This is Dr. J. Welcome to Thesis in 101, where you can't wait for it to be over. In this series, we cover tips and tricks to help you on your research journey. If you have missed the previous lessons in the series, please check out the description box below for the links. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Today's focus is on how to use frameworks. Let's get right into it. In the first lesson, we spoke about the importance of frameworks and how we use it in everyday life. In the second, we spoke about how we can find a framework using keywords. Today, our focus is on what to do with a theoretical framework you found or a conceptual framework you created. To do this, I will use one of the frameworks we identified in the previous tutorial and will give you a step-by-step -step on how to use it. Just a recap on the study that we are using as an example. The aim of our research is to define a digital business strategy. The issue is that we have spotted this new phenomenon, but we don't quite know what it is, or do we know what it looks like, and we don't quite know just how to create or use it. Because this is new, not a lot of research have been done on the phenomenon, but the bits and pieces that we gathered from existing literature states that the DBS is an amalgamation of business strategy and IT strategy. This means that business and IT strategies must be aligned. In addition, the DBS is mostly spotted in dynamic and complex environments or systems. Based on our keywords, we have identified the strategic alignment model and the complex adaptive system model as frameworks for our study. The first thing we need to do is to explain the framework to our reader. This will usually be presented to the reader during or at the end of the literature review. To keep this tutorial short, we will only be focusing on one of the frameworks identified and that would be the strategic alignment model. We must explain each construct in the framework. Constructs are the blocks you see in the model. For instance, the construct business strategy refers to a set of actions the organization takes to ensure its well-being in relation to its competitors. You must also explain the relationships between constructs. Remember in the previous tutorial how I said you can spot a framework by checking if it has arrows? Well, these arrows represent the relationship between constructs. For instance, the relationship between construct business strategy and construct IT strategy is called intellectual alignment. Intellectual alignment refers to the degree of integration between business and IT strategy on a strategic level with the emphasis on the organization's strategic plans, mission and objectives. Do this for every construct and relationship. Now, of course, not every framework uses arrows to indicate relationships, but it is a pretty common way to show it. After explaining the framework, you must contextualize the framework. All this means is that you need to explain to the reader how you will use the framework in your study. Think of your framework as binoculars with multiple settings. So this is where you explain to the reader which setting you will be using. For example, the key parts of the strategic alignment model are the relationships between constructs. So as part of the contextualization, we can tell our reader that in our study, we will be using the binoculars on three distinct settings, one setting representing each key relationship. We can write, the application of the SAM framework in this study focus on three levels, namely intellectual, operational, and cross-domain. We then break down each setting so that the reader understands exactly what we will be focusing on at each level. Let's use operational alignment as an example. Within this study, the focus will be on how an organization's changing infrastructure impacts their business infrastructure and vice versa. Once we have explained our setting, we can use our framework to shape our data collection plan. Now, a framework is not the only thing that will shape the data collection plan, but that is a tutorial for a different day. Let's look at specific things that the framework may influence. Hypothesis. In our lit review, we said that the digital business strategy is an amalgamation of the business strategy and the IT strategy. Let's take a look at our framework and identify the pieces that may be relevant to this section. As you can see, our framework has two constructs called business strategy and IT strategy. While based on this framework, we can see that as separate constructs, Business strategy and IT strategy has a relationship named intellectual alignment. So if we merge the two constructs to effectively create a DBS, as per our literature review, what will happen to intellectual alignment? Does this mean that if they are amalgamated into one construct, they will be in perfect alignment? Since we haven't conducted our study yet, it is an open question. So we can use it as input into developing an hypothesis that we can test in our study. 
Frameworks also influence how you develop your data collection instruments. For instance, let's say we want to collect data from an organization and we are using a questionnaire to do it. So we use our framework to develop questions to ask. Let's look at intellectual alignment. We may ask things like our IT strategy and business strategy match each other, and we adapt our IT strategy to business strategic change, etc. We will do the same for operational alignment and cross-domain alignment. Since we use the framework to create the data plan, it is fitting that it should be used to analyze the data too. As a reminder, our data instrument was a questionnaire that focused on the relationships between constructs. Sticking to the example of intellectual alignment, which is the relationship between construct business strategy and IT strategy, we may run a few statistical tests on the data we collected to test this relationship. This is to check if the hypothesis that was specific to this relationship is supported or not supported. In our case, let's say the hypothesis is supported. To ensure that you have tested every part of the model, you can create a section for each part of the framework. In this example, because this is for a thesis, it warrants separate headings, but if you are writing a dissertation or a paper, you may only get the opportunity to write a paragraph on each. In summary, your framework influences your entire study. You can use it to understand aspects of your problem you would otherwise not be aware of. It shapes how you collect data. It shapes how you interpret your data. And ultimately, it influences your contribution to your field of study. That concludes the series on frameworks. If you are interested and you would like to see more videos like this, please give this a thumbs up. Let me know if there are any other topics you would like me to cover. Signing off.